And that's not all of them. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Ev and on this channel we like to talk about all things knitting. So now that it's 2024, it is time to look back at our year of knitting 2023. I'm super excited, I've actually been a little bit nervous about this one. For the last couple of days I've been pondering exactly how I'm going to be filming this because I feel like this is going to be a beast of a video. We have a lot to talk about, a lot of projects to go over, I think in the end we probably ended up knitting about 23 to 22 different projects. So I kind of listed them all down and I think how we're gonna do this is we're gonna split them up by Knits and Babbles because Knits and Babbles, if you guys haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend you tune in. We do them once a month and it's when I go over everything that I'm currently knitting on, everything that I finished and all my new acquisitions. So if you wanna stay more current in the loop, highly check that out. I'm gonna share with you guys my opinion on the project on the yarn and how wearable it is if I do wear it and how I feel now that it's, um, most of these projects are a little bit, a few months old now, so how I feel a couple months looking back at them. I have my coffee, which will most likely be cold, but let's go back to January of 2023. The first knit that I finished in 2023 is actually this little sweater vest. Now this one doesn't currently have a pattern. This is something that I whipped up and knit up myself. This was knit up with Rustic Heather Sport from Lich and Lace and a Tin Silk Mohair held together by Sadness Garn. It is a lovely blue and honestly, hopefully you guys can see it, but I absolutely love this blue. So what I'm going to do for this video is rate the yarn, the pattern, and my wearability. So we're going to go with those three criteria, those three cate categories of criteria. The thing is, this one, because it doesn't have a pattern, I can't really rate that one. So that one's going to be an A. The yarn, I'm actually going to rate this one an 8.5 out of 10, only because the Rustic Heather Sport, it's a little bit itchy. Just rubbing my arms against it. It's, it's a beautiful yarn. It knit up beautifully. I didn't have any split ends. It's not really felting that much for a rustic wool, um, but it is itchy. So I can't actually right now, just like with my arm here, it's, it's getting a little itchy and uh, uncomfortable. So this is why I typically wear this with a long sleeve underneath. So that is also going to take part in the wearability. I typically have a hard time finding tops to wear with this. Um, I also really like to wear turtlenecks and a turtleneck with a sweater vest. I don't know. So you need to feel the vibe for it. Um, doesn't always work. And my turtlenecks are also darker colors or even thicker fabrics. They're not really thin ones or I have knit items and I can't wear this over a knit item. So if I was to make this again, I would probably use a different yarn or make it a lot bigger so that it's more comfortable and I have a little bit more room to squeeze in a bigger shirt underneath. Honestly, for my first cast on and cast off of 2023, I think we started off with a bang. Now my neighbors are probably gonna think I'm cuckoo because I will be changing clothes a lot for the next like hour. I'm just gonna be swapping, swapping in and out of knits. The next knit that I wanna talk to you guys about, which is my second finished knit of 2023, is actually one from my boyfriend and it was this zipper sweater, the Petite Knit Man zipper sweater. Now I'm not gonna try it on <laughs> simply because um, it's not for me. <laughs> this was knit up in Sadness Garn Frigid Garn. Frid, frigids, frigids? I'm gonna put the name right here. I was never able to say it. This sweater was actually knit, I think it. I finished it around the new year, just when January started. And this one is actually really heavy. It's a really heavy knit. So my, I gave it to my boyfriend. It's the first sweater I knit him. And the thing that I struggled the most with on this one is of course the zipper just lining up the two fabrics and getting the zipper lined in. I know Petite Knit has videos showing how to do this step, but basically lining the zipper flap and the front of the fabric and then placing the zipper in between and hand sewing it was super, super tricky. So my zipper isn't the smoothest, 
Although when you wear it, it's still, it's not too bumpy, but it's not the smoothest. I did wash and block it before sewing on the zipper to make sure that that was the final like look of the yarn before sewing on the zipper. This yarn, I would rate it possibly a, I'm just feeling, I would rate this one possibly a 7.5 out of 10, simply because again, it is kind of like the rustic Heather Sport. It's a little bit softer, one reason why I'm not crazy about it is because I don't know if you can tell, but everything sticks to it. It's kind of annoying for that matter. Um, the amount of times I need to take off floofs and little, yeah, my hair is all over it. But yeah, this yarn is like Velcro. Everything just like sticks to it, which is a little bit annoying. And especially since he wanted a black sweater, so I knit it in black and now I'm kind of regretting it. If it was a gray, maybe these little extra knickknacks glued to it wouldn't be so bothersome. Also, this yarn is incredibly warm. I would rate my boyfriend's the sweater for him a 6.5 out of 10 because he doesn't wear it because it's too warm. My boyfriend is someone who tends to run a little bit on the hot, like warm side. He wears it, but he kind of forgets about it. It's a little too warm for him, which I understand. I didn't anticipate this yarn being this big. I ordered the yarn online. Um, so I hadn't felt it before in my hands and now feeling it, I don't think that this is the yarn I would have chosen for this one. Even in the skein form, it felt fine, but then knitting it up and having a full on sweater is a completely different story than even just having a little swatch. But yeah, so I think that for my first man zipper sweater, this is a success and this would mark the second sweater of the year. My third finished knit of the year is probably one of my most ambitious ones, and it is a sweater that sadly I never wear. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this one was an advent calendar, so I bought the advent calendar not knowing what the final product would be. I had never felt the yarn before. I just wanted to, everybody was buying advent calendars, and I wanted one that didn't just give you yarn, but gave you a pattern with it. This is an only calendar and um, I absolutely love the experience. I love the calendar. I just think that I should have picked one of their other calendars. This one was their most ambitious one and I had just seen a little swatch and got really excited and they actually had different items knit up with this pattern in mind. So this is the only advent calendar of 2022. And I ended up finishing it in about February because it took me a little bit longer and we'll get right into it. So this is knit up with Onling Yarns. I think it is their, I'm gonna put the number right here. They don't not name their yarns, they just number them. I think this is 21, but if I'm wrong, I'm gonna list it. So this is a colorwork sweater. It is a full on rustic uh, Shetland wool. So this was the first time I ever touched or held or knit with Shetland wool. I had never experienced it before. I was expecting it to be a little bit on the rustic side. It seems that I started off my year with some itchy wool. <laughs> yeah, it feels similar to my uh, Lich and Lace Rustic Heather Sport. So this yarn is really thin and twisted. I have a little bit left over of the pink. I chose this one because of the green and pink combination in yellow. I thought that it was beautiful. If I was to rate the yarn, I would rate this an 8.5 out of 10 again because it is a little bit itchy. This is one of the issues with buying online is that like you don't really feel the yarn and the yarn that I bought for the last three sweaters was Typically, if I went to a shop and felt the yarn, I most likely would have chosen something else. The colors are beautiful. The knit knitting with this yarn was a pure pleasure and it spit, and spit splices so well. This one hasn't really felted all that much, which is an additional bonus, again, because I feel like rustic wool would felt a lot. So the pattern, I don't know if it's just me who knit this, but I would most likely rate this like a six out of 10 simply because it was a little bit tricky to follow along. At the time was used to petite knit patterns and it was written in a different format, different style. So it wasn't something I was typically used to knitting. Maybe now with another year of experience, I would be more comfortable knitting this pattern. This being my first color work was extremely ambitious and I was crazy. Again, I don't know if it's me or if it's the pattern itself, but the fit isn't great. This is one reason why I'm not crazy about round yoke is because like it, 
It fits weird and the sleeves are like really, really tight. So I knit the small, but the body is like loose and just, yeah, this goes all the way down here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just not crazy about the fit. So I don't really wear it because it tends to bag around the chest area. And I don't know if it's because I don't have a chest or if it's just the way I knit this, but it's just not my go-to sweater. However, I do love the color and everything, but yeah, wearability, I would probably say a two out of 10 because I completely forgot about the sweater till this video. Another issue with this pattern is all the ends to weave in. So each time there's a color change or a color row, that's an end to weave in. So if I was to flip the sweater inside out, like remove it and flip it out, it's just ends to weave in that I never did. <laughs> because I got too lazy. The pattern did specify to weave in your ends as you go. And I thought I would be good enough to weave them in chunks as I went, but I quickly gave up on that. So that is everything that we knit in January. So on to February. So I didn't only work on really big projects last year. I also knit up some socks. So these are the Regia socks. I don't currently own them anymore. They were gifted. Um, but these socks were a pure joy to knit up. This was the first time that I had used the Regia Virgin Wool Socks yarn, and it is a self-striping yarn, and it, like, the design just works up itself. As long as you stick to the, Regia has a couple of free patterns online for different sizes of feet, and as long as you stick with the stitch count in those, the, the design will self-draft itself. Um, the yarn for this one, I would rate it a 10 out of 10 because it is a virgin wool and it is held with a nylon. And I actually put this in the dryer. I washed it and put it in the dryer and they came out alive and not felted and not shrunk. I don't remember on the label if it said that it was washer approved or not. I absolutely love it. There's a couple of socks that I've accidentally slipped in the dryer and they come out fine. And I'm like, yes, this means I can now wash them normally. <laughs> I learned a new technique on these socks, which was really exciting, which was how to do a short row heel. I had never done a short row heel before, and the Regia pattern, the basic heel construction is a German short row heel. There's a video, I'm gonna link it down below in the description. Wearability, I hope it's a 10 out of 10. As I said, as I, said I gave it as a gift. Um, so hopefully the person is wearing them a lot and loving their socks. They're warm, they're really long socks, and they're super pretty. If I ever want to knit socks again, I'm for sure going to buy the Regia sock yarn. The next knit that I want to talk to you guys about is one that we have seen a lot on this channel and it is actually my November jacket. So this was knit up with yarn from a kit, a yarn kit that was supposed to knit up the no frill sweater, but I don't know, I just felt like doing some brioche, learning how to do brioche, and this was the first time I ever knit this type of complex stitch. I absolutely love this one. I also, for the longest time, wasn't too sure about the color because peachy color tones aren't normally a color I gravitate towards. This is yarn from Tofino Knit Company. And when, last year when I went to Knit City, they had kits for building sweaters. This was the last purchase I made that day. And the owner was like, because you are my last client, I will give you an extra discount. And that just pushed me over to buy it. Now, once I brought it home, I looked at the no frill sweater and I was like, you know what? I want something a little bit more exciting. I did, however, need to buy an extra skein of yarn because brioche stitch, brioche stitch takes up, I think it takes up double like a regular stock and net stitch or maybe a little less, but it takes up a lot more yarn than just a stock and net stitch. So I did have to purchase an extra skein of yarn, which then meant that I wasn't ordering from the same color dye lot. So in the end, there's a little bit of a discrepancy in color between my sleeve and the main body. Like I kind of split the skein and made it so that both sleeves had this because my sleeves are a little bit lighter than the body. This one, I would rate this one a nine out of 10 for the yarn simply because the dye lots were a little bit different, but then I guess that's on me. And then also, this isn't my typical like color to go to. I like it, it's grown on me, but I'm still not crazy about the peachy color tone and I wish that this was more like a gray or a more darker neutral tone. But 
I still love it. I love it. It's just, yeah, I would rate this one a nine out of 10 for just personal preferences. This is a fingering sock yarn base. So it is a super wash wool with, or merino with a kid silk mohair. They're mermaid mohair. I don't know if they still have this color on their website. They do different lots and hand dyed yarns. So they often change their colors and their supplies. Wearability, I would say 10 out of 10. I wear this all the time. If you guys have been watching my videos for quite some time now, you know that I'm always wearing this cardigan, this jacket, and it has pockets. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite knits. I learned how to do brioche on it. So the November jacket, the way you do it is you cast on the back triangle right here. You cast this little portion right here, and then build up, pick up for the sleeves, start knitting the panels, and then kind of like knit till about the arm length and then connect the front and the back and then keep knitting for the body, pick up for the sleeves, knit one sleeve, knit a second sleeve. One detail that I really, really like about this jacket is the fact that the finishings aren't ribs. It's, it's double knitting, which I, this was the first time I had ever done this and I absolutely love this look. The band here is also double knitted all the way around. Even at the base, at the bottom, there's no ribbing. It's again, double knitting, which is such a lovely touch to this jacket. I think this is my only project with double knitting like this. So this project was a beast. I think it ended up taking me three, I started it in December, December, January, February, finished it for Valentine's Day. So yes, this ended up taking me three months which isn't too bad, um, but at the same time, I was just knitting the Regia sock, so it's a sock and a sweater that month. That basically wraps up February, and now let's step into March, which means Marseille sweater. <laughs> Over the past two years, I have knit a Marseille sweater every March. This isn't part of any like knitting cowl or anything. It's just something I do because I absolutely love this pattern. This is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I just love the way that this sweater is oversized and fits. This is my favorite one out of the two. And this one um, was knit up with Kensington Prairie Farm, their DK Alpaca. So this is a yarn that has, I don't know if you can see them within the stripes, but this is a yarn that has, that has little blue kind of specks and flecks in it. I held it with a mohair and then the stripes are knit with a different yarn. The stripes are knit with a fingering weight held double to make a DK weight. It is the Fiberco, forget the name, I'm gonna put it right here. This is the second Maxi sweater that I knit. This one I was able to successfully do the short rows, make them better. The first time I knit this one was the first time I was doing a German short row. So those ones kind of have a little bit of gaping and a little bit of holes. This one was a much better success. The fit is a lot better. However, this one, it is a little bit wide because th this was knit up with Kensington yarn. Their yarn is alpaca and alpaca tends to drape. It's a heavier fiber and it gets a little bit more loosey and just like, you know, sits. I would rate this yarn a 10 out of 10 because it is so soft. It is so soft. I absolutely love Kensington Prairie Farms and their yarns. The color is stunning. Um, it does pill a little bit, but with the mohair that really helps it and then the stripes because they're knit and just like a, a wool fiber, I think that that also helps. Wearability, I would actually rate this one 100% out of 10. I think this is possibly one of my most worn sweaters out of all my sweaters. I just really like wearing this one with jeans tucked in with a skirt. I wear it all the time. The only thing is it is very warm. It's a really warm sweater. So today with it being like negative eight outside, this is a perfect sweater to cast on, to cast on, to throw on. And I think that this sweater just works really, really well, especially with my hair. It kind of, it's kind of the same color. <laughs> I love the long, thick ribbed sleeves, and this really is just a pure fun knit, and I knit this in a month. I think I casted it on at the beginning of March and finished it in March. I'm also a sucker for double folded, like double knit collars, the ones where you knit them, do a purled row, like fold knit, and it sew them in the inside. I think that this is just such a clean, gorgeous look to have on any sweater, and yeah, that's what I have to say about my March Marseille sweater. 
I'm actually currently debating if I knit another one this year. Do I knit it without the stripes? Do I knit it with the stripes? Do I do something a little bit different? Do I modify the pattern? If you guys would want and are thinking about casting this sweater on, I highly recommend you do because this pattern, it is beginner friendly. It is super lovely and fits really, really well. And it is just petite knit. You can't go wrong with petite knit patterns, but yeah, if you guys are interested in casting this one on and would want to knit this up, maybe we could do like a knitting cal and knit it all together in March. I don't know if I have, I think I have yarn for it. I might have to order yarn for it. Mm. One modification I did do for this sweater is I actually, actually, because I had anticipated that it was going to be a really long one, I knit it shorter. Um, I think, yeah, I still did the four stripes that are recommended in the pattern, but I did cut the bottom, like I did cut the bottom a little bit shorter. And I think the rib as well, I made the rib at the base, if I remember correctly, just a little bit shorter because I wanted it to kind of arrive when I wear high, like if I wear high-waisted jeans, I kind of wanted the sweater to arrive at the pocket and not go much longer, so. So now we are heading into April and the next pattern that I knit up, I was kind of getting excited about summer knits, about casting on uh, cotton and just more tank tops and airy. I was here, it was already getting sunny. And the first thing that I knit up is a second version of a top that I had knit up the year before, which was this wrap around tank. So this was the first one that I knit up and the first version, which was with cotton viscose linen, a kind of a mixture yarn, a pretty thick, a pretty thick yarn. This was yarn from a subscription box knit crate. I was a self-designed pattern. There were quite a few issues with this one, considering that that was my first year ever knitting. So this has been my first YouTube year knitting. Like what we're watching right now has been my first YouTube year knitting, but this was, my first second year, if that makes sense. Um, so this top was knit up with Emily C. Gillies yarn, sock yarn. I did a couple modifications. However, I'm not 100% sold on this being the final version. I'm most likely this year gonna knit a third one and do some other changes. So the first one that I knit up had a different shoulder construction, different sizes. So this is an open back top with a bar. Now, if you are wondering why I have stitch markers right here, it's because I actually need to shorten the bar in the middle. It's an extra piece that gets added on at the end and to kind of like hold the back together um, and also cover up your bra so that you can still wear a bra if you want to with this. I also wasn't a fan of the big, completely big wide back. I find that a little bit too wide back, which the first version didn't have. It's just like an open back. So that is one modification that I did. Um, I also decided to do it with a softer yarn because this is a plant-based yarn. It's a little bit stiffer and harder. However, one thing that I would do, will do on my next one is actually uh, use an even thicker yarn. Go with a different type of yarn because this yarn, I did the stitch count and I did, like for this gauge, I did do the modification as if you know, knitting different yarn thickness, needs a uh, different stitch count, different needle sizes. I kind of did all that, but I think I prefer a thicker yarn look. I also, another modification I did was also, this is just eye cords all around, like around the arm it's an eye cord. I did that again, but the collar here and all the way around the back, because this eye cord kind of links all, it goes like from the collar to the arm, to the back, to then the strap. I this time decided to do a double knit border all around so that it connects with the double knit band and then the double knit, um, the double knit straps right here. So this is all like this. Um, I also made the straps a lot longer on this version. So this version is a bit more successful than last year's, than the first one, however, um, as I stated, I don't really gravitate towards this one. Uh, yarn wise, I would rate this a eight out of 10 because the yarn is lovely. I've used this for socks. I love 
Emily Seekeley's. I've knit a couple socks actually with this yarn, but I, I rate this an eight out of 10 because I wouldn't necessarily use this yarn again for this pattern. I think that on my part, that was a bad choice, a bad judgment choice, which is something that I've learned a lot about last year. Last year was a lot of experimenting with new yarns and expanding my knitting knowledge of fibers and combinations and what to use what yarn for and what not to use. And this was one of those, I would say now looking back, a learning project pattern wise, I would rate this one a 6.5 out of 10 because there are quite a few things I want to change in this tank top. And then wearability, I would say 8.2 out of 10. I think I've worn this top once or I've worn this top twice before washing it and blocking it and then this band becoming too big and then keep I keep telling myself I'm gonna sew it but I'm gonna sew it tighter and then I never do and then basically I just leave it with little stitch markers I really really need to fix that um, but yeah so that's what I would rate my tank top this one also doesn't have a name right now this pattern and I do hope that this year I will actually be able to knit a third version and then that one be, you know, they say it third time's the charm. So in April, I was kind of into like a bit of a green theme. So with this green tank top, and then I also had this green bath mat that was in the works. So this is knit up with 100% cotton. This is all gazelle cotton yarns. And this is the loop bath mat from Pearl Soho. And this was such a fun knit. This was the first time I ever knit, I ever knitted a project like this. So basically how you work it up is you knit and then you wrap the yarn to get the loop around your fingers. You wrap the yarn around one finger or two finger, depending on how big of a loop you want and then knit into the next knit. And then um, I forget what it is, but basically you just hold the yarn on your fingers for one stitch, then go to the continue knitting like two, three stitches, redo that process, hold it on your finger. So basically there's nothing really holding the loops after that's done. When you're done a couple of rows, you go back and just pull them and try to make them even. And that's it. There's no tying of the loops. There's no, yeah, this was supposed to be knit up with a thicker yarn than what I was using. So what I ended up doing is I actually held two yarns together, two cotton yarns together. If you guys are looking for a bath mat or any carpet, I highly recommend this pattern. This was so much fun. It knit up really, really quickly. And this is actually my doormat for my balcony in like that connects my living room to the balcony. This is actually the mat that I use right there. Honestly, I will most likely knit this project up again if I have enough cotton. Um, the original pattern was all in white and a thicker yarn, but I thought it would be fun to kind of have a little bit of color and a little bit of shift. This is also a smaller version. The pattern is supposed to be a lot bigger, but I just went with as much yarn as I could and then that's it. This is all I had. <laughs> I would rate this yarn a 10 out of 10. It is fun. It works up super nicely. I've actually knit up tank tops with this yarn. I've knit other projects with this yarn. Um, they have unique colors and it is a very fun, squishy, soft cotton to work with. Wearability, I can't really rate it. I would say a thousand out of 10 because we do technically use this almost every day. I would also recommend this one if you wanna try a different type of stitch. This is for every level. The pattern is extremely well written. It is a free pattern. That is true, I forgot to mention this. This is a free pattern. So if you have cotton or any other fiber extra laying around, but yes, if you have enough yarn, I highly, highly recommend the Pearl Soho loop, Loopy Mat. I think it's a Loopy Mat. So that basically wraps up our month of April. <laughs> for May, I didn't actually finish any projects. I was kind of busy working on a massive beast of a project and also I was also working on some extra YouTube content. We dyed some yarn and so for the month of May it was kind of like a little bit of a slow month without any finished knits. So this kind of takes us halfway through the year. So it is now the month of June. So this was the big beast of a project that I was knitting up into the summer and it is actually this lovely jacket right here. So this is a pattern from a book that I bought from my local library like bookstore. Um, it was Vivian Hawksborough's Hand Knitting, Eight Schools of Modular Knitting. And I thought that this pattern 
was stunning in the book, but also I thought it was a very interesting way to knit. I had never cast it on a project like this, um, and it just worked up very differently. I knit this up with Sadness Garn Duo, Sadness Garn Double Sunday for the light pink. And then the yellow is Sadness Garn Sizu Held Double. The rest of the colors are all Sadness Garn Duo. The reason why I went with Duo is because I kind of wanted this to be a light, airy knit for the summer. This is why it's also really colorful and fun. I went with the Duo because it is a wool yarn, but also has a high cotton blend. So the way that you work this jacket up is really interesting. I'm gonna start with the pink for example. So you start with one band and you do this one in garter stitch. And then you will pick up for the blue, work this panel up, pick up for the white, knit this one, the blue, knit this one. And then you keep growing like that back and forth in right angles. And then basically this one has a lot of sewing. So you knit a front panel, knit two back panels, sew the back together, hand sew them. So the front panel, make an extra row for this connecting shoulder seam, sew it all together, and then you can pick up for the sleeve and then just keep doing your colors. So this jacket, the yarn, I would rate this, this was the first time I worked with this much and different sadness yarn. I would rate this yarn a 10 out of 10. It worked up beautifully and it was a really fun project to knit up. Wearability, I would say is an 8.5 out of 10. The reason why I give it an 8.5 is the pattern only has, now this is a downside to this book, is because it only comes in one size, a medium to a large. And I'm kind of a small person, so that was way too big. So what I did is the original stripes are supposed to have 10 stitches per stripe. I removed two for each stripe, which removed like a couple inches all over the body. I think I ended up doing two or three bands shorter for the sleeves and they're still, they're still pretty long. So it's a jacket, so you wear it over clothes, but like it's huge. Even now it's still really, really big. I still have some yarn left over, so I could even make some pockets. I ended up knitting something else with this yarn even. I would rate this wearability 8.5 out of, out of 10 simply because if you want to cast this on, you will most likely need to do, unless you're a bigger person, you, you would most likely need to do your own math. For this one, I had also picked up some lovely little flower buttons that I thought would be cute and festive for the summer, but hopefully this year I can take this one out and wear it. The next project that was worked up was actually one that we knit in a three-day weekend. I got into this trend this summer to cast on something on the Friday and knit Saturday, Sunday, and Monday on the three-day weekend. And it was actually these shorts. So this is a pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this up in Himalayan bamboo, and it is a mixture of bamboo and cotton, I think. I think it's bamboo and cotton this yarn. One thing with these shorts is the fact that they're actually a little bit short. Um, I wear these at home, but I don't wear them to go out because I only had two skeins of this color in the Himalayan bamboo, and I didn't want to make them stripey or make them different colors, so I went to as far as I could. This is how long the leg is. It's a really short leg, so I wear them to lounge around the house. They're a little bit loose and uh, they're not form-fitting, but they're a little too short for my comfort to wear outside. If I had just like a inch more of yarn, I it would have been fine, but I didn't. So this pattern is amazing and it was my first time knitting a pair of shorts, knitting a bottom item for a matter of fact. Um, it does have short rows on the back to help with the shaping of the butt. And I just love the really thick rib. This was a lot of fun. I would actually rate this yarn a 10 out of 10. This is yarn that I've used now in three different projects in two tank tops and a pair of shorts. And as I said, I've worn this quite a lot and it hasn't really pilled or shed or like changed or got too weird. I've washed these like two or three times now already. And wearability, I would maybe rate this because I can only wear it at home and they're a little bit short. I do wish I had more yarn, a seven out of 10. 
It's weird to take out my summer knits in the middle of winter. <laughs> So let's head into July, but to go with the lovely little shorts, I also knit uh, on another long weekend, another three day weekend, the camisole number six by My Favorite Things Knitwear. So this is it. This ended up taking less than two skeins of yarn. So this actually calls for less yarn than the shorts. And once I had knit up the shorts, I kind of knew how this yarn and pattern would look um, because it is also a six stitch rib. The two colors I ended up going with, I did have a lighter blue and I do have a darker gray, but I didn't want it to look like a pajama set. I kind of wanted this to look like if I do wear them together, even if it's just to stay at home, I kind of wanted it to look more like an outfit than just like some PJs. Um, I've worn this tank top quite a lot. And again, I would rate this yarn. This is the same yarn, so I rate, I give it the same rating, but for wearability, I rate this one a nine out of 10. I wore this one quite a lot last summer and I, I like it. I really, really do. Um, it is really light, really airy, and it is super soft. I actually really like the feeling of the cotton bamboo. But if you guys are looking for some fun, a uh, cute little set, I highly recommend the My Favorite Things Knitwear, shorts number one and then camisa number six. Even with just like jeans, I can wear, I wore this with a high-waisted skirt. I wear this with, this is probably one of the tank tops that I've knit that I wear the most in my wardrobe. So how this one works up is you start on at the straps, knit one, knit another, do the back one, two, connect it, and then you connect it at the armhole. And then basically it's just a tube. You just knit like a giant tube all the way down. And I've even seen some people continue this knit or many of my favorite things knit wears tank tops, just continue them and turn them into dresses, which I think is a lot of fun. Of course, you need to keep into account how much yarn you need if you do plan on making a dress because the pattern only lists for the tank top. So I have just closed my blind just to protect my yarn. <laughs> the next project that I finished in the month of July was actually the Sunday tee. So this is a pattern by Petite Knit. This is a top that we knit up along with the Friday tee, but that will go into the next month. Um, the Sunday tee is knit up in Gazelle. I think it was the Superstar wool. It is their uh, Merino Superwash wool. It is a lovely blue with kind of like heather. I guess this is heathered or it kind of like, um, like stri not stripes, but just like different tones of blue in it. So the Sunday tee, the way it is worked up is you knit the double folded little band right here, and then you add extra stitches and basically do increases in these ribbed kind of, kind of like a sun. And then you do increases as you work up the yoke and then split off for the sleeves, knit the body, pick up for the sleeves, and knit both sleeves. When you fold over, so you knit the sleeve, do a purl, fold over, and then that's how you do the bottom. This doesn't have a rib, which I think is really, really nice for a t-shirt. It's kind of like the collar right here. I find that an extremely great touch because for summer airy, sometimes having a rib is very winter and just more cold weather it just gives off a more cold weather vibe. So I really like that. This was the first time that I knit a top with this detailing to it. For the sleeves, I was fine. I knit it in the same yarn, but for the bottom, I ended up having to switch yarn. I knit it with a blue silk that I had. It's just a little lighter, but I don't think it, like you can't see it because it's on the inside. So as I said, I did run out of yarn. So not only did I have to knit the inside a different yarn, but it's initially a crop top. Um, the sleeves are also, I think, an inch shorter than they should be. So they're really tiny, tiny little cute sleeves. I think the sleeve is originally supposed to go all the way down here. So this is a very loose, short crop top. I wear this with skirts. I do wear this with like pants and I just love this blue. I find it such a nice deep blue and this summer everybody was going crazy with the cobalt blue. So I thought that this would work, but just a little bit more um, heather or tonal. So for the yarn, I would rate this one an eight out of 10, only because it's a lovely yarn, it knit up super well, and I really like gazelle yarns. The only thing is, it's a super wash, 
<clears throat> okay, so sorry, I keep changing my blinds because of the sun. Um, but what I was saying is basically last year, one thing that I did learn about myself is that I'm not crazy about super wash wools. They tend to have an extra shine to them that I'm not too crazy about. It gives off for me at least a little bit of a acrylic vibe. They also have an extra twist to them that I have a really hard time knitting with. It's like, I don't know if it's twist in an S or a Z twist or what it is necessarily, but the yarn does have an extra twist to it that I'm not too crazy about. It's just the vibe it gives off. Um, it just doesn't look as nice as just a, a wool and spun yarn. So in July, I also decided to kind of knit up my own pattern design and recreate, and by reusing the right angle technique that I learned, I created this little bag. So this is a pattern that is available on my website. However, it hasn't been tested, hasn't been graded or anything. I just wrote my steps and I do have a video where I do knit this bag. So if you guys want to knit it up and follow along, you guys can do that. But I also think I'm going to re-knit this and make it an actual pattern. I even had an extra button laying around from the sweater. So I used the exact same button, the exact same yarn. Again, the very little amount of blue I had left, which is why there's just one stripe. Um, yeah, I went to my local fabric store and I picked up some little clips. So this was the first time I had ever used and sewn on my own clips. Um, I basically wanted to have an i-cord finish like with the sleeve so all around is an i-cord that loops everywhere around and then i kind of did an i-cord holding the white and yellow i wanted a thicker strap so this is also an i-cord for the strap to tie in with the i-cord around this has been washed and blocked so this is the final size i just wanted a fun bag a small little pocket bag kind of that has um, a main pocket which can hold my phone and I have a Samsung Ultra phone so it's a really wide phone so it completely holds my phone and then there's a pocket on the front a smaller pocket which is just this little flip it here which can hold a credit card a couple cards I thought that that would be something for the summer perfect that I can take along with me with my right angle jacket so now heading into August I knit possibly one of my favorite tees and this is the Friday tee I had actually knit this along in a video with the Sunday tee. I called it my knitting Everest because I was working on both projects at the same time um, to see if I could finish two knits in a month. I ended up finishing the Sunday tee in July and then this one in August. This is probably out of the two, my favorite one. I love stripes. I am someone who, I don't know if you can tell, a lot of my projects have stripes or lines or something. I actually knit this tee up with some Sanjo Silk, a cone. This is how much I have left from the cone. I don't remember how much, I lost the tape on the inside, but this is a wool, 50 wool, 50 silk mix combo, and it is just their undyed natural white. And then I knit it with the Gazelle lace silk yarn. I think it's like wool and silk again. Um, because it is a lace weight, I didn't end up holding it double. I just, the stripes are just a little bit thinner than what the original pattern had. I, this is the second time I knit up this tee. However, this is the first time I actually finished it. My first attempt, um, I didn't like my yarn choice and it just ended up in the frogging pile and just, it's still in the frogging pile, but it just ended up in the discarded pile. So this is the tee. I absolutely love it. This is the first time I knit a project with a silk heavy based yarn um, and it feels amazing. I've worn this one even this winter at Christmas. The only mistake is of course with the very first row. I guess when I knit this, I accidentally knit one row too many of the white. So when it came time to add in the stripe, my stripe is inside out. The You can clearly see where the knits and pearls connect. Um, and that should be on the inside, not on the outside. But because it's the very first row and I only noticed it when I washed and blocked it, I 
haven't gotten around to fixing it or I don't have the heart or the guts to either cutting it, re-knitting it, or just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I tried to take the yarn and go over. However, because it is a lace weight, it ends up just pulling either under it. And then if I hold it double, it looks really chunky and ugly. So I think this way, if I don't tell people about it, most people won't probably notice it, hopefully. Uh, this knit is knit up with a broken rib stitch. So that is basically one row of knitting and then one row knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, another row of knitting, knit purl, knit, another row of knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, and you alternate between those two. And then of course, every couple of rows, you have a color swatch, a color switch for these stripes. The collar is your typical petite knit, knit, fold over, sew on the inside. And then the sleeves are just your simple one by one rib along with the bottom. It is also a one by one rib. Yarn wise, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. This is the second time I use this yarn and it works up super great. And I love supporting local yarn spinners and dyers and yarn shops. So this is a shop that is on Granville Island here in Vancouver. The wearability 100% out of 10, <laughs> 100 out of 10, I wear this one so much. And even right now as I'm wearing it, it just feels, it just feels really, really nice. It feels really, really soft and they have it. I don't know if they have other colors, but they have it in black, which is a beautiful, stunning black silk. The next pattern that I knit up during the month of August was actually these fun little socks. So these socks are the Snippet Socks from the 52 Weeks of Socks book, the first edition, and it is knit up in some lily and pine yarn. I absolutely love this yarn and I loved working on these socks. These socks worked up beautifully. I also love how they're not exactly the same. This one's a little bit pinker and this one's a little bit more yellow and green. And I think that's just the beauty of hand dyed yarn. Um, I love the neon, I love the colors. And the skein was actually really interesting. If I can find a picture, I'll put it here. It was kind of like a gray bottom skein, but then the top was really colorful. And I thought that it was gonna be mainly a gray yarn, but turns out it's a lovely color. Oh my God, my hair's everywhere. But turns out it's a lovely pop of color. So the way these socks are knit up, it is a top down sock. It starts off with a twisted rib cuff and then you split off and put stitch markers where the design is gonna go. And then the back is just all stockinette. So it's a simple knit. It's a great way to start off detailed socks if you want to, because it's basically just like a panel that you follow a chart. And then the back is just stockinette. So it's not complete, really challenging. Like there are really fancy cables on the side, but there's only two. And then the design in the center is just knit two together, yarn over. It's really simple um, and it only stops at the foot. So then the rest of the foot, it's just stockinette with the two cables that keep going along the sides. So it's not a really challenging, like you can get, if you get through the hard part, which is just this little panel here, then you're good to go. So I think that this is a really fun way to get into more complex socks, but still having a mainly stock and net sock that still knits up fairly quickly. This yarn worked up beautifully. I bought even more of this yarn this year when I went to Knit City. So this is a BFL wool that is held with a nylon. Probably my one of my favorite socks from the year. I don't know why, in the middle of summer, I decided, you know what, it's time to knit on something new, something fun. I guess I found this pattern book and I just got really excited. The next knit that I knit up is actually this lovely pair of mittens. So these were knit up with Gazelle sock yarns and this is a free pattern in the Knitting for Victories pattern book by the Canadian Army. <laughs> So this is the book that was released during World War II for people to knit for, I am assuming that they knit these up and then sent them out to veterans or during the war to keep people warm. It's a pattern book with many patterns, patterns for men, women, children. I think there's even blanket patterns in there, but I thought that knitting some mittens with a little finger flap would be a lot of fun. I really like mittens like these that you can just like slip out your digits and then still have a mitten. <laughs> this was knit up in a gazelle sock yarn. 
it's a really interesting brown marled kind of color with ha it has some yellow and green to it even so it's like a really interesting kind of stripey color I would actually rate that pattern a 6 out of 10 simply because like it doesn't exactly tell you what to do with the flap so I ended up sewing it on the inside. Um, it also tells you measurements but the needle size is needles from back in the day which was a different measurement I'm assuming so I had to google and find out what the exact needles translates to nowadays. And then the yarn, I had to figure out that it was actually a three ply yarn, fingering yarn that they were using because it just said the skein that was used at that time. It didn't give you yarn like weight requirements or what the fiber and ply was. It just said use the skein. Um, wearability, I haven't actually worn them yet. It is winter. It is just now like today getting cold here in Vancouver. So I will most likely wear them out and I will let you know in the future how I feel about them. For the month of September, we only have one project that I finished and it was actually a birthday gift for my boyfriend. This is the second sweater that we knit him. It has its own video as well that I will link. So this is the in stillness number two pattern. Number one is actually, I found out later on that number one is the woman's version. Um, so this was knit up in Drops Lima. And this is a wool that I picked up from Wool Warehouse. This was the first time that I worked with this yarn. And might I tell you, I love it. I, it's a really nice, really soft yarn. And it has, I think, 30% alpaca. So it's a wool and alpaca mix, which is why I think it's really, really soft. This is a design that has a, hopefully you can see it, but up to here, it has a broken rib panel on the front and on the back. And then the rest is just stockinette stitch with your ribbed cuff and sleeve. I ended up sewing this little don't shrink me label so that he could tell which was the front and which was the back because if it's not on a hanger, which we don't store and it's on hangers, uh, he has actually worn this quite a lot. I think he's worn it like since I knit it like six or seven times already. The yarn, I would rate this a uh, nine out of 10. I absolutely love it. It is super soft, super squishy, and they have really nice colors. I purchased mine on Wool Warehouse and the wearability, a 10 out of 10, because this one he actually wears compared to the other sweater. It ended up being a lot lighter of a fabric, a lot, it's a lot lighter of a wool, it's not as itchy, and it's just more fun to wear. Um, this one also, he ended up choosing the pattern for this one. It was a birthday gift, but not much of a surprise since I basically asked him, what do you, which, which sweater would you want? <laughs> One modification that I did make for this pattern is basically when I knit it up, for some reason, I also noticed a couple other people, I knit one of the larger sizes. I forget which one. I think it was the large or the extra large. And when I did the, the double, the broken rib, it ended up being only like a little bit of a panel. And I noticed on Ravelry that most people that knit bigger sizes did have a smaller, thinner panel here. And on the small, this is how it looks. So I kind of just continued knitting in the broken rib till about one inch before the separation for the sleeve because I thought that that would just look better. I did that on the front and the back and that that would hold more true to the original design. And this is a super fun, easy knit pattern to knit up, especially when you're knitting for others. I tend to be a little bit slow, tend to very complex knits. I lose interest really quickly and I wanna go back to knitting my own things. However, having a broken ribbed section at the front was kind of a little bit of a motivational boost. It kept me interested at the same time and uh, but was still kind of simple, easy so that I could just knit it while watching TV and just still have fun. Now, as we head, I'm basically just staying in my Friday tea because I haven't, this is the time where I stopped kind of knitting big clothing items for myself. And then we're gonna finish off the year with clothing item. But October was basically a very exciting month for me because September we had just gone to Knit City 
and I purchased some yarn there that really inspired me for the month of October, for Socktober, to knit and design my very own socks. So this is them. I have worn these a little bit, so hopefully they're not too... But yeah, so these are the leftover candy socks. Now, I've talked about these quite a lot. I named them the leftover candy sock because they were knit and designed in October. This yarn kind of gives off spooky Halloween vibes. And I just thought it kind of resembled some candy, some leftover candy from Halloween. And I knew this pattern was gonna come out after Halloween, so, you know, leftover candy. So the pattern is available now on Ravelry. If you guys haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you do. And this was knit up in uh, Crafty Jack's Boutique Tough and Tender Sock. Both colors are knit up in that. The white is the Au Naturel, uh, their undyed basic white natural wool. And then the color is in the morning, morning in the mountains. This was the first time I worked with this yarn and next time I go, if I ever stumble upon Crafty Jack's Boutique's yarn, I'm gonna buy it again because this yarn worked up so well. It's a thicker yarn than your typical sock yarn because it is a three ply yarn. So it adds an extra little bounce, an extra little structure, and it is a super wash that doesn't feel like super wash. So this is what I like my super wash to look like. Like a wool, it has a little bit of a fuzz and it's not shiny or like plasticky, like it's not coated. And that is what I search for now in my super wash yarns. So this one, I would rate the yarn 100% out of 10. I loved it. They have so many different colors. And what's really fun with Crafty Jacks is these were actually mini skeins. They have, even on their website, you can purchase mini skeins, small skeins, medium skeins, a little bit bigger, and then a full skein. You have like different options depending on what you exactly need. But I actually really, really like that because depending on projects, sometimes you just need a little bit for color work and then you don't wanna be stuck with half a skein and then add it to your stash and just have half a skein laying around. And I appreciate that immensely. Wearability, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. Pattern-wise, I would rate this 100 out of 10. I might be biased because these are my own designs. This was the very first pattern that we released, and I'm super happy that in 2023, we released an officially real pattern that had been tech edited, that has been written, test knit, and everything. So this is what we knit during the month of October. I basically just focused on this a lot. For the month of November, again, we were kind of not knitting on really big things. I ended up knitting these little tiny ornaments. This year, for some reason, I saw everybody got really inspired with holiday ornaments, and I did too. So I knit these. I am gonna knit more next year, and I'm gonna diversify and knit more ornaments, more variety. But these were the two I knit. I knit the Straja Star and the mini Christmas stocking ornament. They really don't take up much yarn. They take up very little. And if you guys are interested, I will link the patterns down below. Um, wearability, I can't really rate yarn. It was leftover yarn, so I'm not going to rate those. But we also revisited an old knit that I designed, which is the Blueberry Hat. So this is the hat. It has a lovely detailed rib texture with cables all around. And then at the top, it has the rib decreasing kind of like a raglan style into a star. So there are five points that connect at the top. Um, this was a pattern that I revisited and re-knit from the year previous year. And I said I was currently writing it up and making it into a pattern, but I kind of, I don't know. I'm on the fence with this one if I should actually release a pattern or not. I absolutely love this hat. It is super, super warm, but that's where I'm at with it. The pattern is written. I just need to grade it into different sizes, and I'm just on the fence with this one. I started focusing on other patterns, and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So this is knit up with some Knit Crate yarn that is left over. You can no longer get this yarn Knit Crate closed. It is a worsted weight held with a lace. The lace is a leftover tin silk mohair from the very first knit of the year from the Blueberry Vest. And I held them together to get this lovely fluffy hat. But I forget what the fiber was. It was a really nice fiber mix. 
And then the final thing that we knit in the month of November is actually one of the shawls from the lovely 52 Weeks of Shawls. This is the second shawl that I knit, and it is the Autumn Vibes shawl. This is the first time that I ever use cashmere. I had never bought any cashmere before. This yarn was actually gifted to me, so I didn't even buy it. It was a lovely gift from my mom. This yarn, what is really interesting, is it's like a charcoal gray with some lovely little blue specks in it and blue hues. One modification that I did make on the shawl is I extended, because I had a little bit more yarn than the shawl comes in two sizes, a small and a large, and that's it. I didn't have enough for the large, but I didn't have an, I had too much for the small. So one modification I made is I doubled the band. So this band here, both bands are supposed to be the same length. I doubled the twisted cables. And then the rib here, this is the original length. I doubled it for this one. So I ended up having a longer, I don't know if you can tell, but I ended up having a longer border, which meant that by it being longer because it's a half moon shawl, the shawl is also longer. It's too long for the camera. The shawl is also longer from end to end. I can't show it all. It's warm and it is a really light and airy shawl. For the yarn, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. It worked up super beautifully. It is super, super soft. And I actually really, really like the color. The pattern wise, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. The pattern was easy to follow. The pattern worked up super beautifully. And even with the modification I did, I am still really, really happy with it. And then wearability, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. I've worn it many times. I even wore this on the plane on my way back home for the holidays. And it just is really nice and cozy. If you guys have that book, I think this is one of their patterns that takes up the less amount of yarn because most of the patterns in that book take over like a thousand yards in one color if it's held two different colors or just they take, it takes up a lot of yarn, which I am so now happy to announce brings us into the final month of the year, December. The first knit that I want to talk to you guys about is one that we talked about most recently, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. It has its own video and we did talk about this in the Knits and Babbles, but it is actually the Moby sweater. So the Moby sweater is a pattern by Petite Knit, and this one was knit up with Drops Charisma and Drops Kid Silk Mohair. So a little disclaimer, in my monthly Knits and Babbles podcast, I had mentioned that I ended up using a thicker yarn than was required and then went up a bigger needle size to compensate for that, but then knit a smaller sweater size. And then someone commented that I was actually using the correct yarn, which they were right. I'm not 100% sure where I remembered seeing that the Moby sweater was knit up with a DK yarn once the mo mohair is attached with the other fiber. I'm not too sure where I got that from. I, But basically, I just remember knitting it on the six millimeter needles and I was so sure that the yarn I was using was too thick that I just ended up going up a needle size because I preferred the fabric that this created. This one is a little bit more loose, a little bit less stiff. I just thought that the Drops Charisma held with a mohair on a six millimeter needle created a really stiff and hard fabric, as in knit on seven just allowed for more of a drape and just more of a breathable material. Yeah, so the pattern, I am gonna correct myself, the pattern does call for a DK weight held with a mohair, and the Drops Charisma is a DK weight. Hopefully that is clear. Another modification that I made on this sweater was I actually ended up knitting it two inches shorter, and it is still, it is still pretty long. The sleeves are a little bit long as well. I got worried when I first blocked them that they would be too long, but they kind of fit nice. They're just on the border of being a little bit too long, which is really interesting. I wonder if it's because I went up 0.5 of a needle size because people have also commented that when they knit the sweater up, it was actually too small for them and too tight. I don't know what it is exactly. If I just knit with a looser tension than most people, or I feel like I knit really tight. 
I don't know. Maybe it is the fact that I changed my sizes. I knit the full body till about here on four millimeter needles, the US six. And when I switched and recasted it on and re-knit on, on US seven, which is 4.5 millimeter needles, I ended up having about half an inch on both sides wider. So that means that in the round, my sweater is an inch wider than it would be on the six millimeter needles before blocking. So I think that that is what ended up happening. It's just because I ended up with a bigger needle size, I ended up with an actually more comfortable, loose, oversized sweater, and I didn't end up getting a small sweater. I'm actually curious if you guys have knit the Moby sweater by Petite Knit, does it fit you well? Is it like oversized like it's supposed to be or is it too small and tight? I'm actually really, really curious. What was your experience knitting the sweater? Um, yarn wise, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love the modification I made for the sweater. I love the color. It's like a marled cream color held with the Drops Kariz, uh, the Drops Kid Silk Mohair in a little bit of a lighter peachy color, which adds to the sandiness. The pattern, I would rate this a nine out of 10, simply because I had to carry the pattern with me everywhere I went which was a little bit of annoying, so that's why I'm removing one point. But other than that, this pattern is stunning, beautiful, and lovely. It was a joy to knit up. A little bit of a headache when I had to connect the front and the back. And wearability, since this was just knit up last month, I think I've worn it like six or seven times already, and it still looks beautiful and stunning, and I'm gonna keep wearing it. I am for sure, this is for sure one of my favorite knits in my wardrobe right now. The last top item that I knit was actually the Novice Cardigan by Petite Knit. So this was the first time that I knit using Knitting for Olive Mohair, and this is a project that calls for two strands of mohair held together. So this is what the yarn looks like. I also talked about this one in my Knits and Babbles recently, and I guess in December or in the fall, I ended up having a little beige moment because a lot of my knits ended up being kind of lighter cream colors compared to the more color variety blue yellow knits that I knit during the year. So I used about six skeins of yarn. I thought I was going to run out, but I have a little bit more. I ended up pairing it with some lovely little, these buttons are really interesting because they're not just white, but they kind of do have a little bit of like a pearl glossy touch and finish to them that I really, really like. And I thought it paired really well with the jacket, the cardigan. One thing that I really like about this cardigan is the sleeves. I love how there's no decreases all the way down till the cuff. And then you do knit two together, knit one, knit two together, knit one. And then you basically decrease by half your stitches before doing the little ribbed cuff. I, I think this is like a puffy sleeve or bell sleeve. No. But anyways, I think that this is such a fun little touch to the cardigan. It makes it look a little bit more princess, more fluffy and cute. It's very easy. I would actually read this pattern a 10 out of 10. I don't know why I was so intimidated to knit with mohair beforehand, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And last time I said that I wasn't sure if I would knit a full sweater or shirt with mohair only and wearing it right now, it doesn't feel I had mentioned it was a little bit itchy, but wearing it right now, it feels really, really nice. It doesn't feel that itchy. So maybe I will make that souffle top. I'm still on the fence. This is the souffle top. I'm planning on making it, but I don't know, I'm on the fence. Yarn, Knitting for Olive, love them. I love their colors. They're, they have beautiful colors. Their yarns have a lot of colorways. They are a little bit more pricey. I think the Knitting for Olive mohair is double the price of the Drops Kid Silk mohair but it does feel a little bit hot, nicer. Um, I think the silk is a little bit thicker in it and the mohair, I don't know if it's where they get their mohair necessarily from, but the mohair is a little bit softer and it's a longer mohair. So I actually really like that. So this also with the Moby sweater is possibly one of my favorite knits in my wardrobe right now. So I think we finished off the year with some really nice knits. So finally, the last pattern that I want to talk to you guys about is actually, the reason why I'm putting this as the last is because it was kind of a little bit of a flop. It is actually these socks. So these are socks that I knit up for my sister for her birthday. However, 
They ended up being really, really small, so I didn't end up giving her these, and instead I gave her the Regia self-striping socks. One reason why I think that these socks didn't work out necessarily as best as they could is because they were socks that are knit from the toe up. I typically knit socks from the top down and to the toe. I and this is the first time I've knit socks with a, such a dense cable. So the cable is also supposed to be on the back panel here, but when I was knitting up the cable, I thought that this would be too thick to have on the back as well. Another modification I did is I made it just a little bit shorter, just because I my preference with socks is to have a shorter leg length. The sock ended up being really tight, like not wide, and this yarn, it's the same yarn that I used in my April wrap tank top, the Emily C. Gillies green yarn, but it's not that stretchy of a yarn. So the sock circumference is really tight. And when you put it on, it like stretches out the sides and it's just, my sister has a similar foot size as I. It's just like, it fits. It's just a little bit too tight and uncomfortable. Yeah, what I find really interesting is I knit these on the correct needle sizes. I knit with the correct yarn thickness and I knit with the exact same amount of stitches. In the past, in 52 weeks of socks, I always knit size one. These were supposed to be for nine, eight inch circumference foot or nine inch circumference foot. And that's usually the size I go with. And then the length, it always says, go till how long you want it. But for some weird reason on these socks, it ended up being extremely tight. I'm assuming when my, I knit tighter toe up, I'm not too sure what happened. And this cable, because it's so dense and so many crisscrosses, I feel like it pulls the yarn really tight together. Don't know what to do with them just yet. I might unravel them. So that was the last item of 2023. So if I look now at my pile of clothes, I have about, I think I ended up counting, I think in total it was 24 different knits, which is a lot, a lot of knitting. Um, I didn't think I knit this many items, given that some of them were not for me. Um, I do think this year what I would like to do is maybe knit a little bit less, but be more attentive with my knits. Be more attentive with the designs I choose, the yarns I choose, be more selective with those, and not get inspired so much by what is online and be more, uh, I recently I have been getting more into knitting my own patterns and my own designs, which naturally takes me a little bit longer because there is a lot of unraveling and just making it more to my measurements and figuring out the math and calculations with those. Just taking more of the time with that. Also hoping that this year I can spend more time spinning yarn and just maybe then maybe knitting that, whether it be small, most likely small. I just want to spend more time learning more about the fibers, maybe finding projects that have more interesting techniques. Like last year, I learned how to do brioche. I learned how to do double knitting, got better at German short rows, and I learned how to do German short row heels. One reason why I really like doing this video at the end of the year is looking back at my year, sometimes you get really tunnel visioned into that moment, that month, but looking back now, I've actually did a lot and it's really nice to see the pile of clothes that I have, but also to see exactly how much of how much I've grown as a knitter. So now this video, I feel like it's running really, really long. I originally wanted to do add on a goals portion for 2024, but I think we will end up doing that its own video. Yeah, I am actually really proud of everything that I knit in 2023. I think that as my first full year on YouTube, as my first full year of official knitting, it was a pretty successful one and I learned a lot and I can't wait to see what next year will hold up and what crazy projects we will get into. Also, I did say that I would do a stash portion for this video, but I don't know how I feel about doing the de-stash anymore. And I don't think we're gonna be doing a de-stashing video. I think what we're gonna be doing is just keeping track and at the end of the year, next year, I'm just gonna number and name how many skeins each project took for this year. And we will just calculate how much yarn I ended up using. Hopefully we can use most of my yarn from my stash before I keep on buying more. I don't really plan on buying much more Right now, I have a lot of projects that I wanna knit up with the yarn I currently have, 
and hopefully we can discuss all of this in the goals for 2024 video. My throat is getting dry and I have a feeling that this video was going to be really, really long. I think that this will wrap up my year of knits in 2023. I hope you guys have a lovely, beautiful day and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Bye!